talked about, uh, unequally yoked. We talk about unequally yoked uh, when we are deciding who we link up with as our mates, our purpose partners, our spouses. And so through a conversation that Eric and I had at the beginning of this year, I said, you know what? That's what we need to talk about. Um, how did you and I connect? Uh, well, we connected over social media. What I happened? saw one of your now, podcasts. Listen to the, I want you to pay attention very carefully as to how they decided to connect. Because this actually ties into everything we're talking about. The very thing she's talking about in, in, in its reality, in its fullness, is she came on the show because she saw him breaking down and crying. But listen very carefully. She, I don't feel she's been very vulnerable on this show for an hour and a bit. Listen to what she describes when she comes on. I think it's important. I think it's a circle of moment. I said you were crying. <laughs> you was <sighs> crying a lot. So I was like, oh. So I just, then I sent you a message and said, it's going to be all right. No, I didn't say <laughs> it's going to be all right. But I did, I did contact you and I said, I need to be on this show and talk to him about um, being equally yoked, you mm -hmm. know? So. Hold on, why are you going to say I was crying? So why did she mention the crying part? No, it might be nothing. I, it could, it could be nothing. I could be, look, I could be looking too deep into it, but you know what? You know me, I'm going to look too deep into it, anything, right? Personally, I felt like when she mentioned that, it was almost an indication of, again, her relationship with vulnerability. I can almost, I, I feel like I bet that part of him crying maybe might have, it might have touched her, but it also might have felt like, uh, it might have felt like it was too much or it might have made her feel uncomfortable. See, when you're not comfortable with your own emotions, it can be very hard to deal with other people's emotions. Like, if you notice the part that she mentioned, she could have said, you know, I love the fact that you were vulnerable and you said about, you know, you talked about what you had gone through. But she specifically focused on him crying as to then I sent you a message, say, oh, like, you know, you'll get through this. It's going to be tough. Right. I think it's important that she mentioned that. I think those words are not to be taken lightly because there's probably something deeper with how she viewed the crying as to why she was even messaging him in the first place. Of course, she messaged him. They started talking. And then she's like, I want to, I need to be on the show. Now, the question she said is, I need to be on the show. What for? What for? Why did she need to be on the show to talk about being unequally yoked? But she barely spoke about being unequally yoked because we don't know what she was unequally yoked with, apart from the fact that she said that they weren't spiritually aligned. Right? Absolutely, Elsie. That's that's essentially what she was saying. Without really saying it, she was telling him, man the frick up. You know what I mean? Man the frick up. But at the same time, she also found it to be a safe space, hence why she wanted to come on that space and others and hope. You know what? Sometimes people hope for. Here's what I think might have happened. Sometimes people hope for that some people insult people with a hope that they would have the space to be able to be as free as you. Yeah. Like sometimes there's a, sometimes people insult people or laugh at people or take the mick out of people when really what they want is to have the same thing. They want to have the same freedom that you have. So maybe Parva was thinking, you know what, come on a show and, you know, if he can cry like that, then I would have a safe space to also be vulnerable. But I think once she got there, she just, just, she just couldn't do it. Right. She just couldn't do it. She just couldn't release herself to be able to then give that vulnerability that she should have been given. Right. Brian. You were sick. You had a soul tie. <laughs> you had a soul tie. <laughs> So that's the only part you remember from the whole episode. I was crying. I, you was crying. I was not crying. You was vulnerable. <laughs> you, 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 Ooh, listen, listen to the words she just said there. We got it. There we go. There we go. Like she just said there. She said, Oh, you was crying. You was crying. Why is that the focus? Oh, you was crying. Why is that the focus? And the joke is the joke is not to be missed here because the joke is also a part of the lack of vulnerability she has. See, when people are not comfortable, they start making jokes. Okay, so the reality of the situation is she couldn't be the one crying. Oh, no, no, no. She will not be on this internet crying in front of us. No, she couldn't be that. That couldn't be her crying the way you was crying, Latarius. She can't cry like that. No, no, she couldn't cry the way you was crying. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You ain't going to see me on Beyonce's internet, Jesus' internet, crying the way you were crying. 
Mama, Mama, you know that I love you. No, no, no. You know what I mean? It's cry me a river. Yeah. Um, so I think it's quite interesting that that she that she picked up on a crying, but then what she said, she said this: you was real vulnerable. He asked her, Do you remember anything else from what I was in? And she said, Oh, I just remember you crying, and you was real vulnerable. Now, why is this important? I need water, man, because my mouth is getting dry. Let me tell you why this is important. Because she has falsely identified. Let me not say falsely. She has only a shard of understanding of what vulnerability is. See, she has what we call a stereotypical uh, 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 um, idea of what vulnerability is. Oh, if you're crying, you're being vulnerable. No, I don't need to cry to be vulnerable. You, you understand what I'm saying to you? I don't need to cry to be vulnerable. That that they they're not the two are not synonymous, right? Me being vulnerable, I might end up crying, but does not mean I'm actually being vulnerable. So when she links vulnerability to the tears, it is a false equivalence because the two are not the same. They're not they don't go hand in hand. It, you can be vulnerable and end up crying. Crying comes underneath the vulnerability. It is not vulnerability. You have to make sure you get that right. And so when she says, oh, and that's why I said, I'm going back to the original point. I think she thought to herself, maybe if he's doing that, he might create an, a safe enough space for her to finally, okay, for to finally open herself up. If he can be that raw, he can be that open, he can be that vulnerable, he can shed those tears, then maybe when I get there, I'll be able to be vulnerable in some sense. But like I've told you guys before, what you've not trained for, it's very difficult to start doing. Mm. That's also true. That's also true. And now, you know, she may be discerning the spirit that's on him, may think that she's operating in the gifts by saying he had a soul tie and was emotional. Again, I don't believe in soul ties. I don't believe they're true. They're not biblical for me soul ties but you know you know i don't agree with uh, soul ties at all um i i think it's just rubbish but i do believe in us being emotionally tied to somebody so you when you connect to somebody you know in the sense of the fact that yes you can say soul tie in terms of the fact that we're tied by the soul in terms of our emotions and even our personality is changed by the other person and the way we think is changed and we 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 merge at two or becoming one yes but in terms of soul tie like spiritual transfer I, I, that's too much for me I, I i believe that you know you can catch a demon through say ah please stop that nonsense i, I don't believe in that but in the sense of the fact that you know uh you know you being merged to becoming one i can definitely hear that Okay, um, you know, I, I can definitely hear that. I think she wanted to, I think she's one of those people that wanted to be, that was clowning the, the vulnerability, but wanted to be in that vulnerable place. You know what I mean? I think she wanted to be in that vulnerable place, was clowning his vulnerability, but wanted to be in that place. And unfortunately, he spent an hour and she couldn't do it. I felt like I was crying the entire episode. I don't know. I just, was just, I just, oof. Uh, yeah, there's the tissue over there just in case I triggered you again. <laughs> it's a show. It's like, oh, wow. So, yeah, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> Do you notice uh, she said, okay, look, uh, here's the tissues again just in case I trigger you again, you know. But you didn't trigger him. Why would you trigger him? What are you? It's meant to be your interview. Why would you trigger him? I know that obviously... Maybe you saw that other video, but why would you think that you might trigger him? And in the end, she didn't even bring anything out. So why would you think that? And that's what I'm saying to you, that before she points the finger at the husband, I'm looking at her now. You've given us all the ammunition I need to know to see the way that you behave, that you probably, if you behave like this in a relationship, Look where her body language is at when she's when she finishes that note. The tilt of the head, the hand underneath the chin, the almost a cut eye at him. Where 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 would people recognize your face from? I told them that you have a recognizable face. What are some TV shows or movies? Uh, I'll leave with this. Uh, which well, we, is, we really can't say. 
but I've been doing some stuff. Well, I'm talking about the show they see in the past. Fossil with it. To you, um, you were on. Was it the Sisters of the? And did a few years ago. Okay. I mean, well, um, um, legally, <laughs> or um. Well, both. Let's break that down. Yeah. Legally, stuff in the ends way. before you really the ink dries. One hundred percent. So, um, it ended before that. I had got a legal separation. Oh, you got a legal separation. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I had got that before. I forgot. It is a strike. You're absolutely right. It is a strike at the moment. Um, it's a strike at the moment. So maybe there's. Is she had, does she have a book? I don't know. Does she have a book? Does she have a book that she's got? Maybe that was part of it. Um, you know. So maybe that was part of it. Maybe you're right. Maybe she wanted to advertise herself. It wasn't great though. It wasn't great advertisement at all. I wouldn't want to go and buy the book after. And I'm sure the audience wouldn't want to go and buy her book after. You know what I mean? It was. It's. It's, it's not even like a really bad interview. Like, oh my gosh, she's so bad. I want to go and watch. It's like, yo, there's nothing to. There's nothing that's gonna make me go there. Um, I filed. So, what year was it finalized? <laughs> you want to know the years? Yeah, yeah. We got. We got to put. Oh. We, gotta, we got to put reference around this thing. Okay. So, um, it was. It was two thousand and nine. And just also as well, because of the insensitivity, I feel like she has, even towards Latirius and his crying. I'm like. How sensitive were you to your husband's needs in terms of emotionally? Right? How